Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Timber and Stone. I have made a bunch of stuff, but I'm not quite done, as you can see. Uh, I've only got a thousand plaster and about eight, or about 500 or so of the timber things done. But I've decided to go ahead and extend our walls. I kind of started thinking these guys are sleeping in here, these guys are sleeping in here, and they're outside of our little safe place. Now the only other option was to delete the beds, destroy the beds or disable the beds or whatever and build more beds in here and I started thinking about it well maybe it's time that we started expanding our borders. So I'm gonna bring the wall down and across and I'm gonna put a door there that way anything walking up the road can get in and then I'm gonna bring this wall up and then come straight across. I'm just following the terrain. This is just all temporary. We're going to eventually flatten out all of this terrain because this is where the majority of our town's going to be. All in here. I know it's kind of close to the edge, but that's just, you know, and we will eventually expand over onto this side too. But at the start, I'm thinking once we get our town hall situated right here, then everything else can just kind of fall into place around it. You know, so I figure the town will probably come out to about this far and then extend and then probably come back and around in like this, into this area. All, everything will all be built into there. But we've got to get some walls up around us so that I don't have any skeletons or any bad guys or anything like that just creeping up onto these guys. Now, of course, granted, they could always spawn in here. But for, you know, the most part, they've always seemed to spawn outside a good bit away from our town hall. So when we put the town hall over here, It'll be a good ways outside of everything that they'll hopefully spawn. They won't spawn anywhere where there's people or whatnot. I, I'm pretty sure there's some spawn mechanics in play. I just don't know what they are. Um, we will, uh, so I just wanted to show this. I mean, I'm still, you know, like I said, I'm still in the next day of building all this, making all the materials in order for us to start building the town hall. And they haven't even mined all this out. I did put a, a tool chest and a food crate over here. That way they didn't have to go anywhere all day. They could just stay over here and mine. We got one new migrant, and uh, I'll show you them real quick before I pause. Uh, Aubrey, and we made her a fisherman because she came as level three, and uh, Savudin was already a level five miner. She was level one miner, so I figured we'd have a third miner. Um, and I made, I changed Savudin from fishing to mining, and then made Aubrey a fisherman since I wasn't losing anything. But all right, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to tie you in. I didn't want to keep playing and have them build this, or, or they're not going to build it all. They've, we've only got 309 bricks, and it takes four bricks per block, and they're all double high. So yeah, it's probably about a thousand bricks. Um, but you know, a good majority of it could get built. I didn't want to come back and have it built, and you'd be like, oh, "Where the hell did that wall come from?" Now you know. All right, so I'm gonna pause it. I'll be back. Uh, whenever they're done. Hey guys, and welcome to, welcome back actually, not welcome to, we're continuing. Okay, oh, we're getting invaded. Skeleton, 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 the skeleton army has come to invade Newville. Will the migrants survive or will they die so I've got Quentin out here but I think he's got crap in his inventory no he doesn't he's just got some bricks so go put your brick up as soon as they all get we might need us another soldier chop chop light all right we're gonna put Quentin on hold let him sit there while we get the other four or the other three guys out here let's see are you good to go Oster should be yeah, Oster's really good to go. He's like, man, I've been waiting. I was born ready. So let's get Oster out here. They're not moving towards us yet. They just spawned in. So let's get Oster out here, put him on hold. We got Zach and... Heck, I don't even know where Zach's at. Where's my other archer, too? Oh, he's he's practicing still. He uh he might have gotten up a little bit. Yeah, he's up to level eight. He'll be useful. With this many, yeah, it'll be advantageous to take them all. Where's the uh 
Did I put Zach back mining or building? I didn't know where he's at, folks. He died somewhere. There he is. I'm like, man, I just can't find you, buddy. Where you at? All right, let's, you're good to go. So let's get you out here. I would like to be able to group these. I mean, it's, uh, the dev said that maybe, or Ethel said that maybe they were, they were thinking about maybe doing something along with them lines later on down the road. He wasn't quite, he didn't, he didn't really elaborate. Like they might add some kind of grouping and stuff, but that right now, you know, you just kind of set something as go kill it right there, charge the enemy and everything will go after it. But when you've got like this, you know, where you got five or six multiple targets, you got archers. You don't, I mean, granted, the goal is to build a castle and you'd have your archers up on the parapets and they would be shooting down from the walls and then your infantry inside in case anything got in, your infantry would then attack. Granted, yeah, that's the way they did it in the old days. But in this particular game, as you're building up your towns and you're building everything and, and coming and going, 90% of the time you're going to end up, you know, manually taking a couple archers or a couple, an archer and a couple melee or something out. And you have to really micromanage these guys. But as to where I could take and group up the two melee, you know, control one would put them in group one. And then when I hit one, whenever I click somewhere, the two, wherever I click, however many people you have, it would make that many squares, you know, highlight, basically designate all of them to move to either that block or a block next to it, adjacent to it. You know, so I could grab two guys hit control one, it would lock that in, so then any time I hit one, it would select that, or shift one, or whatever, it would select that group, and I could move my melee over here, and then I could hit, do the same thing, control two, to group up my archer, my archers, or whatever, and then I could send my archers over here on this little hill, that way they're shooting down a little bit better, um, or at least I, I was kind of led to believe back in the day that it was better to be up as an archer shooting down a level or two, that then, you know, than it was to be, you know, below something. Um, so then you could move your archers over here and you can move your melee over here and then you could just hit one to quickly move your melee back or two to quickly move your archers back or whatever or, you know, whatever. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know a really efficient... That's, that's about the... I don't know. I guess about the best way that I could figure to do it. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, it's done so many different ways in so many different games. Like, this guy right here is taking off. He's ready to go. All right, let's move you out over here. Let you get in some shooting. Since that guy definitely wants after Archer. Or done. All right, so this isn't going to be that bad. Don't get me wrong. It's just... Now these guys are off hold. Another thing, I would like another toggle. I, I really, really would like for your military. Okay? I know that this has been, you know, I've been playing for a while now. But there's something that I would really like added to the game. A toggle for your military. Now, I've already asked for a toggle for civilians. So that you can force a civilian to flee whenever he notices. When, he, when, when he's going to be involved in combat, you can force him to flee. That's something the game's got to have. I mean, I'm sorry. It's just the game has to have that. Too many times does your blacksmith or your woodchopper or your forger die because instead of running away, he decides he can take on them three skeletons. I mean, that just happens. And, and I've watched several other Let's Plays and seen exactly that thing happen. You know, granted, they've already got the weight thing, so where you got to monitor how much they're carrying, so you got to be careful or they can't outrun them. But, you know, there needs to be a, a flight, you know, a fight or flight mechanic that you can enable. You know, number one, for, you know, put it down here. Anything. Have it, you know, alternate. This from being hold, you click it again, and it says, uh, you know, hold position instead of stop. I'd like a hold position for military. I don't think that there is one, but we're going to check here just to make sure. Right in here. Is there a hold position? Nope. Stand at guard. Walk patrol routes. Operate siege weapons. Train using archery targets. And then stay idle. 
I would like a hold position for melee. So that you don't have to keep trying to find them. Basically, then I could say, all right, you go here. You go here. You go here. You go here. And if I had that selected, that hold position for melee, then they would go there and they would stay there. That's my issue. That's my problem. I want them to stay there. They weren't involved in combat, so what happens? Now they all start running around. They all start fleeing. They all start, well, not fleeing, but, oh, well, it's time to go home. There's nothing here. Oh, yeah, no, there's five skeletons over there, but no, nope, there's nothing for me to do. Time to go home. You know, that just it aggravates the shit out of me. There needs to be, okay, I've said it enough times, but I'll say it one more time. There really needs to be a hold position option for your, ma your military. It, it's, it's in dire need. It needs to be in the game. Okay, because see, like, these guys are hauling ass now, going home. And you have to constantly keep playing with guys. Because short of short of letting your guys die, I mean, yeah, the object is to just let them go and fight. And I know that combat's not done yet. I mean, I know that they're working on it. And I'm sure that they've got something like that in the, in the works. And just a simple, shut up, Zane. That would be fine, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I would just like to confirm that, that that's coming. Because... Because when you've got four guys out here you're trying to tinker with. You're having to worry about simple things. Like uh, getting shot in the back. It's already bad enough. You know, it's already bad enough that you got to worry about your own guys shooting your guys in the back. Much less your guys, you know, deciding, oh, well, I want to walk over here instead or whatever else. You get my, anyway, let's just have some fun and kill some skeletons. Skeletons are fun to kill. We'll designate all that stuff to be, you know, picked up after we're done. All right, so see there, he got shot that time. No reason to get shot. He just shot through the skeleton. Good skeleton guy died. And both arrows hit Zack in the chest. <laughs> I got me war wounds. <laughs> Alright, let's walk these guys back. There we go. Stay back. And the bad thing is, is that when there's enemies to fight, they won't even hold position. They won't even stop. Like if I tell him right now to stop. He'll just break stop here in a second and go on about his business and, and charge anyway. Watch him. Well, maybe he's going to call me a liar. But they've done it a dozen times out there earlier. There he goes. He broke stop to charge anyway. What's the purpose of the stop button then? I mean, I know that it was intended to, to make people stop doing a job or stop, going, stop doing something. To clear their current, I'm going to go. But... You know, let's put you there. Let's walk you around this way. It's just easier to deal with. Only deal with one or two. Chase me. There we go. All right, how many more we got? Okay, now that I've ranted a little bit, I didn't really rant. It's just, you know, it's a suggestion. I make a lot of suggestions while I'm playing, and I find out very quickly, because Ethereal watches these videos, that a lot of this stuff is either... What's going on? A lot of... Ooh. That's Quentin and Zach. That's these guys. A lot of this stuff is already in the process of eventually someday possibly being implemented or it's already available and I need to shut up because it's already there. I just need to learn how to use it. <laughs> Things like that. But it's all right. I mean, you need an objective outsider that, that likes, you know, enjoys the media to tell you, you know, what they like or don't like or what needs to be changed. That's what I'm doing. And that's kind of what I ask you guys to do with your comments. You know, let me know if there's a problem. If you want me to stop ranting so much, you can try and tell me not to, but I'm still going to do it. 
That's just what I do. Especially when I'm adamant and passionate about something. This game, this game has just got so much going for it. I am just having such a ball with it still. All right, let's see if there's any more skeletons out and about. How many did we kill? One, two, three, four, five, six. We got seven today. Dang it, folks. Zack and the skeletons. Get Zack and the skeleton slayer group. We got us a chicken up. There ain't much spawning. Stuff sure don't spawn very fast. We got seven skeletons, but we only got two livestock today. Hmm. Something seems wrong there. All right. Well, let's get all these bones. I still ain't figured out what bones are good for. We will eventually, though, and we got a bunch of them so far. Hopefully we'll get some metal plates, or scrap metal, rather, from them guys. I like that we're getting more and more at us. That's, that's pretty cool. Alright, so, as you can see, they're building the walls and getting a good bit of the walls done. That's nice. I haven't set them to build any bricks, but I need to. And now that they're done with the slaughtering of the skeletons, we can go in and I can set Zack back to being a stonemason. I can set Oster as an archer. I don't, never really, we're going to, I guess we can let Oster mine. Yeah, he can mine when he's not fighting. There's no sense in leaving him sit there. All right, let's see, infantry. And, uh, Zack at 12. Ooh, good. All right, so Quentin is has been building um, archers. That's what I need. And no troops needs to continue training. Um, actually, Zach. Where's Zach? Zach needs to engineer so that he can build that other target dummy first. So we'll let him go do that. And uh, we need to queue up a bunch of bricks. Resources. I haven't said any to be made. So I'm figuring probably a thousand. A thousand? Yeah, because we're going to do the outer walls. And we will eventually do a lot bigger an area. I mean, this is just a for now type deal. And I'm actually going to take this all the way up. And then I'll put a door there. There will be a door here. And I'll probably put a door back here somewhere and a door over here somewhere just to get in and out of it. That way my, my tree cutters can get in and out. And they don't have to come back and walk all the way around. And it'll probably end up coming across here and then coming up this way. And then we'll just end up building our whole community in, inside all of it. Now, as we saw, skeletons will spawn inside of it. And that's fine. I, you know, I don't care that things spawn inside of it. Typically stuff spawns in the morning, you know, when there's no people around, so it won't matter. Maybe they can't, they can't spawn close to buildings or close within a certain range of buildings. That would be nice. But getting these walls built is pretty important because when we get these walls built, then, uh, you know, we don't have to worry anymore. But all this is done, so we're ready to start deciding on the uh, on the Great Hall. So, let's go to Dig Mine. Actually, what I like to do is go to Construction. Go to Construction, Walls, and then we'll go, let's go, we got something that we can't make. No, we'll just, we'll go to, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do it out of either. What does this umber brick look like? It's like a pinkish color. Yeah. Pole brick. That looks pretty pretty fancy. Let's look around. Let's see. Yeah, we might make the great hall out of that. That looks pretty fancy. So let's see. Uh, we can do it like right about in here. And we'll go, so let's say 20 by 20 maybe. Let's back it up a little bit. Uh, so it would be, what, 22 by, no, we don't need it that big, 22 by 16, uh, 15, 14, 13, 14, 16, or 17, 
17, 16, 15, 14. And that leaves seven and seven on each side with a three for the door in the front. But what if I want to do two doors? I was thinking about this. I was thinking like somewhere over here, putting a door and then put another door on this side. That way it's, you know, got two entrances. Um, so that would be six plus three even sets. So six, eight, ten. And then five in the middle would be good. Yeah. So 15, 15, that'd be one, two in, then a door, a door, a door, then one, two, three, four, five, a door, a door, a door, and then wall, wall. Yeah, that would be good. 22 by 15. All right, so we'd hit alt now. So 22 by 15 would be 20 by 13. So we can cancel that. So we want our... To our, our dig mine to be 20 by 13 and that's going to be too close to the road let's try there yeah 20 20 by 13 you got to think 20 by 13 how big are them tables also that's something we got to look at too because I want two of them tables in there the large tables they're three by nine. Three by nine. So that's nine long. And we'll run them like this. So that's nine, ten, eleven. No, wait. Three, four, five. Five. Then six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And then a gap between the wall, fourteen. Fifteen. So we need to go two more. I think. Let's see. 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we need 15 wide just for the flooring, just for the tables and stuff. And then the walls. So it needs to be whatever by 15. So 20 by 15, not 13. So it's going to be two wide, two more wider. 20 by 15. There we go. It's going to be huge, but I want it huge. All right, so 20 by 15, and that'll let me put 9, 18, no wait, let's do it longer, 20, we'll go 22, 22, 24, yeah, and then that'll put the wall, the wall, yeah, the wall, and then... That'll give us, how big is that? I want to be able to do two tables. So that's 18 with a gap in the middle, 19, 20, 21, and then 22, 23, tw three, three spaces at the back. So the table's going to end right here, the second table. And that'll leave us a space, I think, a space and then three. Wait, the tables are 9, 18, <laughs> and then 19, 20, 21. So, yeah, that'll be the last space. The table will end right here. And that'll leave us a four-slot space in the back. And we're going to dig a, a ramp going down into a cellar up underneath it where all the food's going to go. Or all the storage for the food's going to go. There's going to be, you know, food set up out here. And it'll probably be right here. We'll probably skip two spaces and then put food, like, you know, a couple food crates or a food barrel here and a food barrel here and then a food barrel here. And then we'll have a table going this way, and then another table going this way, and then over here another table going this way, and another table going this way, with a three-space area in between them. Actually, it'll be four or five spaces in the middle because of the gap after the chairs that I'm including. So it'll be like a five space in the middle of it that you can walk through. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, that'll work just fine. All right. Yeah, I got to go through it like that. That's I knew I normally do that off camera, but uh, you guys got to see my little thought process here in this episode of how I figure out how big I need a building to be and why. So as soon as we can get our miners out here, we've already got this here. 
So they'll come out here and work. We just got to send them out there to work. All right, so let's go with you. Go here. And then let's send you to go here. And then let's send you to go here. And then we're going to send you, who I don't know where you're going, gathering required items. Well, you're going here. All right, what are you doing? Where are you going? Well, walk over here. Empty your inventory there. All right, we got one, two, three. All right, where's my fourth miner? There he comes now. And four. Where are you going? Emptying inventory. Go over there and empty your freaking inventory. We're probably going to have to go objects, storage, and move that stuff back here. So we'll go masonry. Masonry stockpile. We'll put one there. And then what else? Tools. Tool chest. Put one there. And then food food crate and put one there and that'll keep all three of them right here hopefully I don't know where this guy's going where are you going emptying inventory yeah they're trying to walk to here to empty their inventory I know what they're trying to do because that one's closer but when they build these now they'll start working it right here no more problem and she just went to go get this wood to build the food crate all right, and now we can click this one. Uh, we'll leave them up, actually, because we're going to end up mining out all this, too. We've got all of this to mine out. I mean, we got a lot of mining to do. <laughs> There's a lot of terraforming that's got to be done before we can build over here. And the reason why is because I want all of them, the bottoms of them all on the same Z level, so that when I roll down like that, it works, the bottom level is the bottom level of every building, not just these buildings and then I have to come up one to get to the bottom level of these and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to have to do that. All right, so right now let's check our thing and make sure that we've got two stonemasons. We don't. So what's that? Oh, he's back to stonemason. That'll give us two because we need them bricks coming out faster. All right, and carpentry. We got one carpenter, and she's a blacksmith right now. Let's go into resources, and let's see if we can make any more standard ingots. We got we can make one more, and we only got one scrap metal, so that's it. Solid. We can make four. And then, I don't know about strong. She's, what is she? She's an 11 blacksmith now. All right, let's pause the game. Time to start looking at weapons and armor. All right, Spatha. What do you got to be, 12? Uh, one more level, and then she can do the Spatha, or go ahead. Nah, we'll wait for the Spatha. 18 to 20 damage. And I've got plenty of these, 26. So, yeah, we'll wait one more damage, or one more level, and, and get the Spatha. So let's look at armor. Um, could probably make the compound bow now. Or the, ooh, we can make long bows. Let's make two of them. That'll be on our carpenter. And I know she's level 17 by now. Yeah, she's level 20. So she can make us two of those. And uh, we'll still keep using the cheap arrows, though, because these require ingots to make, and it only makes four. I don't have that many ingots coming in to where I can afford to, to waste them on arrows. Now, when we get to this point, it might be doable, because I end up getting a lot, lot of those, but that's mainly because we're not using them right now. Um, what is this, 14, and she's 11, we've got Barboot Helms already, arm it, I guess that's a helmet, yeah, uh, it's a level 20 helmet, okay, let's see, 
We've already got sabatons. We're, we're getting close to where we can make coises. We can probably make the kite shields by now. Yeah, heater shields at 14. Um, we can make a couple kite shields. That'll be six of those. Yeah, we can do that. Get them some kite shields. It'll be a little bit more dodge, better block. I think the other ones are five. Yeah, double the it'll double their block percent. All right. So yeah, let's check her. Selfina, how close is she to twelve? Hit F one. Oh, she's not very close at all. But we'll see. As soon as she gets to twelve, we'll get a couple of them nicer weapons made. I don't really see the sense in making the other ones right now when you know, in another game day, they don't need them. Not yet. I mean, it's gonna, the, the new ones are going to be overkill anyway for right now. They're going to two-shot things or two or three hits and kill everything, which they're pretty much doing now with the running them in groups. So these guys are getting that tackled out pretty quick, even though it's a big area. And I think we're going to use the same... I want to look and see if there's a white flooring like a marble type flooring, construction, flooring, cobblestone gray. That might actually look pretty good. Uh, pavestone gray, that's what we've got everywhere else. Pavestone brown, that might not look too bad. Timber planks, timber tiles, floor, smooth timber, pavestone gray, brown, flat stone, cobblestone gray though. That really doesn't look too bad at all. So it's between the cobblestone gray and the pavestone brown. I don't know if that would look right in a dining hall, but it would keep with all the other the other kind of flow, the way that we're doing it. Because I know I don't like that. I do like how the roads are actually starting to deter the grass and turn into roads. The more they're walked on, the more they, they turn in to road like looking material, dirt road, like a path. Which is good. I like that. So yeah, I think we're gonna use this pavestone brown. It's kind of a pukey brown looking, but it'll still it'll fit the scheme that we've been going with. I think we'll use that. And then we're going to build it, I think that we already decided on using, what was it, pale brick? Yeah, the pale brick to build it. I keep forgetting, you gotta right click to turn, not left click. I think we'll build it out of pale brick. Doesn't keep with the wood motif that we've been going with, the plaster. But it's a, it's a town hall, it should be built out of, you know, it should be built special. So that's what the idea is, and we're out of time in the, for this episode, and out of storage for something, wood. So we need, uh, we need a wood stockpile. Uh, I'll take care of that off camera, I'll just throw a couple down, like I'll upgrade that. I could probably upgrade that. That ought to take care of it right there, so I probably won't have to do it off camera. We can upgrade that. And then we can upgrade that one and this one again. All right. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We got a little bit of thought processing done, figured out what we're going to do. And, wow, that is really going to be a big house. And it's going to come front to back this way. And the, the, I'm going to run the shingles this way at an angle, lengthwise. So it'll be, at least the roof will be a different angle than these. Instead of left and right, it'll go front to back. But, uh, yeah. If you're enjoying this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Have a great day.